What is up, everybody? I am your host and longest reigning WWE pay-per-view champion of all time. I am the hot commodity and C, and you are checking out the Uncensored Pro Wrestling Podcast. And we are creating a new series here on the channel where we are looking back at the beginning of Monday Night Raw. Our hope is to watch every single Monday Night Raw from the beginning to possibly now. We'll see how the years go as they go. And I'm very excited to start the series because 1993 is the beginning of Monday Night Raw. And I was born in October. So I'm excited to see um, my birth year, what happened. I also have not seen a lot of these Raws that took place. I'm excited to see everything I missed. One thing I want you fans to know is that when it comes to these early editions of Raw, you're going to see a lot of these matches kind of be like squashes. You're going to see a lot of these main wrestlers fight jobbers, and that's not as exciting to me as it is for some. Uh, but just be in mind of that. But we start off with a great episode, so I want to welcome you to our first episode of Rewatching Raw. And we are on WWF Monday Night Raw from January 11th, 1993, live in New York, New York, at the Manhattan Center. Let's talk about what happens before the night starts. We see Bobby Heenan. Um, he's trying to get inside the arena, but Sean Mooney tells him you're not allowed in. You can't get in, Bobby. You're not allowed. It was cool to see Sean Mooney after not seeing him for a while um, appear on WWE TV. I remember seeing him a lot when I was a kid. When I would watch the old VHS tapes and seeing him again brought back that whole new generation vibe for me. Bobby the Brain Heenan was great too. He was a great manager. And so seeing him was good as well. And we start off Monday Night Raw with Vince McMahon, Macho Man Randy Savage, and Rob Bartlett. They are our first commentating team. And Rob has no clue what's happening during the show. It's funny to see him super confused. Macho Man Randy Savage is not fighting. He will be in the Royal Rumble match, but he wasn't doing a lot of action. This was wanting to sort of have him step aside and be on commentating. And that was one of the reasons that would drive Macho Man Randy Savage to WCW. Let's talk about our first match here. We have Coco Beware, the Birdman without a bird, taking on the mighty Yokozuna with Mr. Fuji. And uh, as Yokozuna enters the ring, we see Japanese women. They give him flowers. And uh, Yokozuna is just huge. And he's not even as big as yet, and he's still huge. Um, a lot of action here, but Yokozuna gets the big win after a splash in the corner and a huge bonsai drop. Yokozuna gets the win here. And it was good to see Coco Boo in action, but you totally knew he was not going to stand up to Yokozuna. I'm excited to see Yokozuna dominate and to see his presence fell in 1993. We get our Royal Rumble in 1993 promo. Um, and it's pretty much they're talking about what's going to happen. I'm excited to see Royal Rumble uh, come up. There's a lot of stuff that's going to take going to take place at that Royal Rumble. So I'm excited to see what goes down. Uh, we then get a promo from Bobby the Brain Heenan where he's talking to Mr. Perfect, and Bobby Heenan says, comparing you to Narcissist is like ice cream to cow manure. There's only one room for one person the narcissist is beyond perfect and when i unveiled the narcissist at the royal rumble you'll think he's from another world a lot of uh little easter egg drops there for you to try to guess who the narcissist is i won't give you any spoilers uh however bobby keenan sending a message to mr perfect there's not enough room in the wwf for both of you guys i'm excited to see who the narcissist is at the royal rumble we then get our debut again on Monday Night Raw. We had the Steiner brothers. They defeat the Executioner. The Steiner brothers look impressive with their high fly maneuvers, their great belly-to-belly -belly suplexes. They get the win after a Steiner recliner. Well, not Steiner recliner, after their, you know, their finishing maneuver. I don't know what it's called. I'll have to find out. But this is their, like, second time on WWE TV. Steiner brothers had huge careers in WCW, former WCW Tag Team Champions. So I'm excited to see what they do here in WWE. The executioners were kind of lame. They were all wearing black, and they really didn't look like they were valuable opponents. We then see Bobby Heenan again outside the arena, but this time he's dressed up as a lady, and he's trying to pass by saying he's Rob Bartlett's mother, grandmother, or I'm sorry, is his aunt, and 
Sean Williams like Bobby Heenan, and he takes off the wig, and you know it's Bobby Heenan under it. I love all the funny humor that Bobby Heenan brings to this episode of Monday Night Raw. He's trying to get in. He's making fans who maybe are just tuning in try to see what he's trying to get into. Very smart. We see the bad guy Razor Ramon. His interview. He's going to be taking on Bret the Hitman Hart at the Royal Rumble. Uh, he attacked Owen Hart. Brett's brother on Superstars a couple weeks ago. And Roman says, I was born ready, Chico. The golden opportunity has Razor Ramon written all over it. Hitman, eight and a half years, you climbed your way to the top. Say hello to Razor Ramon. Eight and a half months, and I caught you. Squashing your little brother like a cockroach was fun, and there's nothing you can do about it. Hitman, you can't do nothing about Razor Ramon taking your precious gold at the Royal Rumble. Um, so we see the attack that Razor has on Owen. He clotheslines him out of the chair. Um, very, very um, intense words from Razor. He, you know, he's comparing his tenure in WWE to Brett. He's like, it took you eight and a half years to get the title. It took me eight and a half months. And I'm already getting your shot. So a lot of a lot of stuff from the number one contender. I'm excited to see Brett's response to that. Uh, we get a headlock on hunger promo. We see Zataka giving a promo for it. I like seeing all these cool behind the scenes things, it's giving you a very retro 1993 vibe. I'm excited about it. We now have a special WWE Intercontinental Championship match. The champion of the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, defending against Max Moon, who is Conan. Or co-dog. So interesting things during this match. They mentioned Amy Fisher, Joey Buttafuoco. Rob pretends to be Mike Tyson, and he talks with like an accent during this match. Max Moon is very impressive with a lot of high flying moves. This is probably the best match of the night. Uh, Moon misses a splash. HBK nails a super kick, and then HBK nails a modified suplex, and he pins Max Moon and retains the Intercontinental Championship. We know at Royal Rumble. Shawn Michaels with a fan against Mario Gennetti. We'll find out which corner sensational Sherry will be in. We then get a promo for WWF Mania, which is Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Excited for that. We then get the Royal Rumble report uh, from Jimmy Gene Okerlund. The Royal Rumble will be taking place on January 24th, 1993, live at 4 p.m. Eastern time. I love how the pay-per-views were earlier on. It's giving me a Different country vibe. We're kind of getting used to that. We see a promo from Shawn Michaels saying, Marjanae, you're undeserving. Sherry, like any woman, you'll be in HBK's corner. Marjanae then says, I'm going to get the title and your career. Maybe you don't know as well. You don't know Sherry as well as you think you do. We learn about some of the wrestlers being in the match. Um, fans continue to try to get in backstage. Uh, we see Bobby the Brain Hand dressed up as a guy who is supposed to be uncle morty rob's uncle he looks you know the ones that, you know he has the mustache and he's wearing jewish like you know attire it seems and uh obviously he's still not let, let in because they know it's bobby heenan uh we get a promo where we see superstars where kimchi and harvey Wilkman slap kamala until reverend slick runs in kimchi's punches slick and then um kamala attacks kimchi and it looks as if Kamala has seen the light and he's going to be working with Reverend Slick. Kamala always freaked me out as a kid. But I'm excited to see what's going to happen. We now get our main event. We have The Undertaker of Paul Bear defeating Damian Demento after a leaping clothesline and a tombstone. Three count for The Undertaker. Excited to see the dead man here on Monday Night Raw. Next week, there's a promo for a steel cage match between Mia Farrow and Woody Allen. Obviously. That is not going to happen. And the night ends with a promo from Doink the Clown. And Doink says, if I laugh, that's all that matters. If Crush came out, he'd be crying too. Crush then comes out. Crush says, if I catch you touching anyone, bruh, you'll be wearing a cast on both arms. Doink laughs, and it's very maniacal. And Crush just looks very confused. We do know that's going to lead to a match at WrestleMania between the two. But this is the first edition of Monday Night Raw. A lot to happen. It was uncensored. It was uncooked and uncorked, just like the announcers were, were saying. I'm excited to bring you our next episode. Stay safe, everybody, and stay uncensored.